Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm going to talk about Carmen. It's a web server with different uses. So uh, I would like to talk about this tool. So <clears throat> who I am? I'm, not, I'm born, raised, built in, in Mallorca, Paradise Island. Excellent. Nothing to do. So I moved out. I went to US. I did my studies in, in US. I worked for a couple of companies like Steak, coming back to Spain. Back to Spain there and work for PricewaterhouseCoopers. Not that fun. So now I work for a small vendor doing application security. And <clears throat> actually this talk has nothing to do with, with my uh, current company, but it's, it's fun anyways. So <clears throat> this is the agenda we have so far. I'm going to give you a small overview. Then we're going to, to what, is, what is this tool about and different uses. So I'm, not, I'm going to give you a, a small overview on web honeypots. Nothing, there's nothing new here. Everybody, I guess many of you maybe have played around with honeypots or have read something about it. They usually run on top of a well-known ser well web server, so you have to use usually Apache, IAS, stuff like that. That's, that's okay. Usually when people do web honeypots, they just focus on, uh, on, attack, on attack techniques. So that's quite limited. In my, actually, my tool is not a web honey itself. It's more like a web server, but you can use it as a web honey button. And I'll give you more details about that. So <coughs> as, uh, web honey button maybe can be just a simple web page with a couple of volunteers, something like that, that you can see how people exploit them to just to analyze what they do. So that can be a yes, that's a well-known well known web, web honey button. And actually, there are a couple now. You can find a lot of uh, people has right uh, web honeypots, you can use that as a baseline. <coughs> but the, the truth is, I would say that to really set up a, a, a real web honeypot is not, it's not that easy. It's a lot of things you have to, you have to take care of. So now we're going to a, a little bit about web. Now everybody knows we are in, in web 2.0, whatever that means. Uh, now we, we all know that web browser and become really complex. There's a, a lot of plugins there, and so there's a, a lot of stuff uh, that can be risky. We, we, everybody knows here that all that stuff used to have a lot of vulnerabilities. Some of them have some browsers and some web technologies and have improved quite a lot, and that's excellent. But still, the security in the industry is trying, is trying to cut up, which now we have really cool security tools like security scanners that most time doesn't work, but they are there. So we, are, we, we want to, to, to play with all that kind of stuff. And that's the main goal of, of the tool. And now we have a small crowd about web technologies. We all know, I'm not gonna say any name, but most of you know that many sites of the, that technologies, sites there used to be very, they have been in the news quite lately. Because they, they're really good into security. So, right. So that's, that's what we get right now with the web technologies. Really complex, playing around with all technology, web technologies now with the new technologies, so it's, it's kind of a mess. So that gives us a, a lot of fun. Now this, we have here a couple of uh, well-known user, user suspects. Nothing special here, because I scripting, so popular these days. <coughs> Different attacks in, in, the, in the browsers. Uh, backdoors, PDFs, yeah, so actually we like all that kind of stuff because now we, got, we, we would like to know about this kind of vulnerabilities because we like to, we, we want to implement those into, into the server. So we can study attackers or tools or whatever. So that's always nice to know all this kind of attack. So we can make, make we don't want to exploit them. Actually what we want is to implement those in our server to see how people deal with them. So um, I guess, I would say that usually, uh, currently, as I said before, people with the web honeypots, uh, I would say a web honeypot should be something easy to install. I mean, you have to install IAS or Apache or something like that, start configuring anything. That's not that easy. I mean, it's easy, but it's a pain in the ass. You have to do all that kind of stuff. So I want something easy. I don't want to bother about that. So I, I want also cross platform, something I can move around to different platforms to do analysis or whatever. Should be. Uh, small performance impact. Actually, that's kind of important because usually security people were, were writing security tools. They don't care about performance. So actually, most of the security tools are performance. Yeah, people, vendors, 
they, some of them, more or less, they take care of that, but open source tools and something like that, people don't care. So actually, that's something that people should, should, should think about it. <clears throat> what I want is, is, is like I use Web Honeypots to do something more than just analyzing attackers. Okay, that's fine for a while, but I want to, to be able more, more, to be able to do more. And that's, that's the goal of the tool. And I would like to also uh, easy to interact. I just want something easy. I can work with the tool, do whatever I want, and pull new stuff easily. So now we're going to know what the tool is about. <coughs> Actually, that's right now. This the framework you get you get right now is 100% Python. So it works in different platforms, cross platform. Actually, it's multi-threading, so it supports different users at the same time. It's actually easy to run. Easy, easy, easy to use, easy to run. That means it's just uh, to configure the tool, you just, you just use an XML file, execute the tool, that's it, up and running. <coughs> actually, the, one of the interesting things is it uh, simulates uh, well known web servers, and we will go into more details about that in, in a little bit. <coughs> it supports basic identification, it can create uh, cookies and session IDs. It has support for CGIs and plugins. <coughs> and now this is how you just, for example, to configure this tool, yeah, just, just use the XML file. In there, you can specify the IP the server is going to use, the port it's going to use. You can define the behavior, so behave like an Apache, IAS, Netscape, or you can do a couple of things more there. Uh, what HTTP methods we are going to accept, and what we are, what, which no, we are going to not allow. So. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. We, ha we can define the HTTP options, and that's useful because people, that's one of the techniques that people use to perform fingerprints on server. So we want to be able to pay with that. Then we can define the cookies and stuff like that. And I will show you around that. So now you can see it's execute. When you execute the tool, that's what you get. Just command line, the old classic, nothing fancy GUI or anything like that. So we have, we have uh, the server running. And now it's waiting there in, in port 80, waiting for, for people to connect. This is the logic. The server tends to be more or less like a web server. Of course, it doesn't have, have all the logic and features that are a real web server because we don't need that. And if you need something, you just write it. So actually, well, here what we get is like we have a, somebody, a tool, a people, whatever, request a resource. So now we, we check that method, method is, is, a, is a low. If not, we have a response, an error response back to, to, the, to, the, to the request. And if it is that method, okay, that, that, that was allowed. So now we, 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 told, we ask the server, ask the program, you want to take this, you want to handle, handle this, re, this request to do something? For that, that's kind of nice because now with the plugins you can write there your, your, your analysis tool or your vulnerabilities there and plugins can play but, but without change whatever thing they want or lock, whatever, and send back to the server and now we, I'm done, send that back to the, to, the, to the response. So it gives you a lot of flexibility there. You can create plugins and CGIs to play around with, 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 the, with, the, with, your, with the target. And that's, you always go back to the, to the server because the server can add additional information to the response. But everything, you can change everything more or less. So <clears throat> that was, so now actually the interesting thing is the, uh, the server, Carmen can emulate like Apache, IAS, Netscape. It has a Carmen behavior, like it's, a diff it's like an Apache, but it changed a little bit. And actually the interesting thing now is you can, actually you can start mi mixing behaviors. Like it's just, this happens like response like AS, this happens like an Apache. So it, now it can become interesting because you can start doing all that kind of craziness into, into the server and see how people and tools manage that. So for example, we have here the different, we have uh, like Apache, we have the heritage, the body, the CI, the application, something like that for Apache, for IAS. And we give you, you get like normal, normal server, like a normal Apache, normal IAS. So we want we to able to customize that. So I would say that behave like an Apache, but the headers usually be like an IAS. The body, that's fine. The CES run like an, IAS, like an IAS application or something like that, but it's like an Apache, inside Apache. So you can do a lot of kind of crazy things there. And that's, and that's, some, and that's really funny. So, <coughs> what, why we want to do that? Because we want to perform fingerprint ev uh, evasion. Uh, Carmen gives give out the same kind of information that a web server does. 
So for example, this, they give you the same HTTP, if you set up the, the server like, to run like a, like IAS, or Apache gives you the same HTTP banners, you can define the same options in the HTTP, the same error message and code, and technology notification that CIs and stuff like that. So that's, that's quite interesting. And for example here, <coughs> we are faking, I, I configure the tool to run like a, like a IAS, yeah, I'm sorry, like an Apache, and there we can see all, uh, this is a tool that many people use to perform server, sh sh fingerprint the, the web servers. So actually I, I configure the server, the Carmen to run like an Apache, and there we can see all the, the, the different checks that the tool perform, because all, all the checks, all the requests are logged into a file, and into the command line, so you can see that all the time, or what, what was, was requested. So here I, I configure this, the, the Carmen to run like an Apache, and it told us, it told us it's a, it identified, no, it didn't identify the, the same version, but that's because I, I guess maybe I didn't put all the, all the same checks in a, I mean all the same response, like an, uh, the same version in the, in, the, in the Apache ID configure. So that's the reason it didn't match quite well, but you can do a really good match, matching there. It depends how much you go into configure the server and put the information there. So I did the same, and now I'm going, okay, I changed the server, the configuration, and now it's like an IAS. And I, I told it, yeah, we have like an IAS 5, and I give you the same, it identify the, the server like an IAS. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And now we can play around and stuff like that. And it's interesting to see how tools, security tools, deal with this kind of problems. So now, another interesting thing, the features of the tool is, <coughs> Cookies and session IDs. That's all, uh, usually all the application, the web application there use cookies and session IDs. So that it will be fun to do something about it. So I, when you configure the server to run like an Apache or IS, it will use the same types of, se of cookie session IDs there. The first one is a generic. The Carmen is a, when you, be, you set up the server to configure like a Carmen. Uh, IAS, Apache, Netscape, stuff like that. So now it's, it's kind of same. So we, we actually you can define to create cookies for each request and send back to that in the response. And we, we want to be able to play around. So actually the tool now gives you eight different uh, algorithms to create decision IDs. So you can see just actually every all, all the thing is quite random. It just, just gives you the first uppercase letters, uppercase lowercase numbers and apply some hashing there, whatever. The IP and perform some, and add some letters or numbers, whatever. And that's kind of funny because that gives us that, and our goal here is just to make people crazy and tool crazy about session ID analysis because um, uh, now there's a lot of people, when people doing web, uh, web assessment, something like that, is, they always put nice graphic about the session, the performing session ID analysis and trying to find something about it. So <coughs> actually that's what we're looking for. When they perform session ID analysis, they, they are not able to get, to get anything about that. Actually now the eight different algorithms, they are hard coding into the code, but I was thinking that for maybe for next release or something like that, it would be nice to, to be able to apply your own algorithms. So what we're looking here is to create patterns. So yeah, when, when people try to perform session ID analysis, it, it can, you can come up with a nice small pattern of people, oh, that's cool, uh, here is something. And people is, is waste, our goal here is to waste all the time we can on people and tools and something like that. So people will try to perform the session, they will try to, to identify an, uh, the session, so, and that's cool, and they will give you, ah, we have found something and present that to the client or whatever performing the analysis. So that's how we're nice. Actually, our goal, it will be something to create really patterns there. I mean, this is completely a joke here. But it would be nice <coughs> to create uh, algorithms that give us patterns there, that so people and tools think there is something there is something going on. But in reality, there is not because, uh, anyways, the tool is, doesn't do anything with the session like this. So, but we just want to play with around with people. So I think that's fine. Actually, you know, anyone knows here was well, that which tool was used to create that? It's a very popular tool. No guesses. Perfect, there we go. Yeah, there's a book, actually. What was the answer? Thanks. 
So it's kind of funny. And now it will be really awesome when we start putting their patterns and people waste time playing around. And it will be like, I mean, I can come up with so many crazy ideas there. It's so funny. But so now. <coughs> um, so now we're going to the, to the, to the brute force. That's uh, another classic there. So yeah, I mean, every every people there they are doing. Um, <coughs> oh, there's no water here. Or, uh, can I have a little water? No gases. No, no for me. Oh. <laughs> I need. Sorry about that, yesterday was an interesting night, so I need a little water. So now, so now we are, yeah, there's a lot of people there, uh, many times people doing build force on web apps, something like that, so that's kind of cool to play around that. So I decided, okay, let's, let's do, I mean, there are tools and people tell that there's supposed to be some really cool uh, build force tools there in the wild, so okay, let's, let's play around that. So okay, so I, I, now the tool, the Carmen supports STD basic identification, and that's nice. Actually, in the configuration file, you can, you can define uh, pages, d d directories, something folders. Actually, in the, that when requested, it will they will ask the it will they will it will requ request identification. So uh, that's funny. So people tend, and they will try to figure out how to get access to that. The funny thing is, the tool the tool never authenticates. So now that you can have people there trying to build force the server all the time, it's not going to happen. I mean, the, 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 tool, the tool is never going to the case. So you, actually, the good thing now, you waste the time guy there trying to, to build force your, your attack. Actually, all the passwords and all the users and everything, they're logged into a file. So actually, you get all the password released from that guy. So that's nice. So we, like, we want people to build force. So we can get all those passwords. So now we are going to to different uses of the tool. <coughs> Actually, here in the in the in the tool, <coughs> as as any as any security tool, something like that, it has different uses. You can use it for offense, for defense. That's what you get with that's what you get with security tools. Nothing about that. But usually, I mean, it's a it's a tool with with two different ways. I mean, you can use it for what kind of things. It depends on your needs. I mean, you can configure the server to be more. I mean, the goal here is to to be able to perform analysis on things. So we can set up the the server and add. Usually now the tool gives you a, just a baseline framework. So you have to do your own. Stuff there, you have to probably you want to add code to that for your plugins or your site, whatever to, to do that. So you just have to set up the 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 way the server in the way you, you for your needs. So that's that's one of the things, and it should be quite flexible for for cover your units. So it should be more or less okay with that. <coughs> so here we go into into the different uses of, of the of the of the tool. So for example, <coughs> so for example, we can use it like a Roach web server to but that, but I will not recommend to use a Carmen as a as a web server because you will not get the same performance and features like a web server, but eh, up to you. Uh, we can use also the, the the tool to I mean we in a, to map an internal network we can we can put it in, into when we are doing an assessment or something like that we can put it there in a, in a network and try to figure out people coming to our server not not that not that difficult it's easy you just send an email to to the entire company or whatever go to this area something cool chances are people will go there and if it's inside the network all done so we can we can use it that to to uh, because actually. I'm sure you know that usually browsers, for example, they tend to be very, very friendly. And when they, they perform a request, they, they, give, they give out a lot of information about the server they're running, uh, 
the money time you can get also the plugins and stuff like that. So uh, that, that information is locked into a file and actually the plugins, CGIs can, can get all that information and decide it, uh, you can decide what to do with that. So that, that's nice that, that browsers are so friendly, they give you a lot of information about themselves. <coughs> we can use it like a web honeypot. We can set up the, the we can create like vulnerabilities there and whatever we want and see and see how people deal with them or tools deal with them. So that's that's that's, that's one of the one, that's one of the uses. But I want something else that people with the honeypot they just focus on on, at, on attacker techniques. So I want to be able to do more. <coughs> and actually, the, the reason I came, I came up with this tool and actually I brought this tool a, a while ago. It's just mainly to, fo to focus on web technologies and scanning tools. <coughs> I mean, uh, in web technologies, there's so much browsers. I mean, browsers are so, uh, pieces of software so complex. They have a lot of plugins inside. Even they are adding more stuff into it. So there's a lot of things we can, we can try there. There's also custom, custom proxies we can play around. So there's a lot of things. And that's what the things I'm uh, looking forward to play with. And the other side, so scanning tools. I mean, I want to be able to, to say, for example, I hear, I hear that last week in a Chinese conference, they, were, they release, I don't know if they release it, but they talk about it, that there is a cross-site script in, in Nessus. So actually, when Nessus is performing a scanning, you can inject their script, uh, cross -site scripting attack, and it will go back to, to, to Nessus. So I, will be, I want to be able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, security tools, they are security tools, but they, they are not secure by themselves. Actually, people think because it's a security tool is secure. Many times, that's not the case. Usually, most of the security tools are cap anyways. <laughs> but we want to make sure, and we want to pay around. I mean, so it's time we take, we take on those. So that's what I'm looking, we want to pay with. <coughs> and that's another interesting thing here, I guess, that <coughs> Uh, I mean, why, why play alone where you can play in group? That's always group is fine, right? So um, here, now we can combine, for example, the logo. Anyone know what's that logo for? No? It's a well-known tool. Pottery? Excuse me? Uh, pottery? Yeah, that, that, I mean, the name of the tool, no? What is it? Oh, come on, people, I'm sure any of you have played with, with, pot, uh, with a honeypot? No, this tool. Come on, there's a book there waiting for you. No? Honey tea. Yeah. <laughs> come on, that's, so now, with the honeydew. Actually, yeah, so now the, what we're looking here is you can combine honeydew and, uh, and Carmen together. So you can set up a site, uh, your host, Honeydee taking care of the host and the stuff like that. When, when a web server is requested, when a web request, it can pass it to, to, to Carmen and Carmen can deal with that. This is more, so now it gives you a lot, a lot, of, a lot of play around things. So now we can combine, really play around with the command, right, try to configure the, the host or site with weird open system and weird conf web configuration and see what, what people and, and tools make of it. Actually, we can put up, I mean, in, into, into, the, into, the, into the server, into the Carmen. We can put the Metasploit browser assessment. It's just like a several JavaScripts and CSI to perform browser assessments. So we can put all of that in, into, into, into Carmen. We can, uh, our site generator is a, is a web honeypot. It's, it's, it's nice. But it's a bit pain in the ass to install. So, but, but you can get actually, but here's a couple of nice features. So you can actually, uh, they're not to play here together, but you can take a couple of ideas and put those into, into, the, into the server. And uh, the junior citizen PDP, actually I think it was last week, last week or two weeks ago, released a Python um, a web faster for for browser, actually, and you can put that into into the server, and and, and that's quite nice. Because, and actually, give you a, a, because it's focusing just in the browser, so we can combine now the server to to perform deeper deeper fasting, for example, using that tool, for example. So here we have the the what we call the stack analysis. 
as, as we are able to, to, to set up the headers, the body, the CGI, something like that, so here we can see, we can get the idea that as we are able to change, to modify, to customize all that kind of stuff, we can set different stuff at the different layers. So that's interesting. We can say in, for in, in the headers, like this file is this, but actually in the body, what, what the file is completely different, and see how tools, browsers, or technology, something like that, deal with that. So that's all the kind of things we, we want to look for. And, that, and that's, well, that's our main goal. And here, for example, I have the, <coughs> the I, that's, that's how, those are the goals when I design this tool. Is we have the Carmen, that's the, the basic framework that you get the session ID, the cookies, all that thing I showed you before. Now we have to write some code. Yeah, no, no love there. So you have to write your own code. So we can we can write uh, fuzzing tools or vulnerabilities there, uh, an analysis tool to be more active. So for example, in uh, vulnerabilities, we can write a couple of well-known uh, vulnerabilities into, into our site, and, to, and so people, uh, we can see how people manage, or people are trying to exploit, exploit those vulnerabilities, or tools, actually that's, that's kind of thing, how tools respond to that. In the, in the analysis, analysis company, we can put their more active tools, analysis tools that will behave, that will re react to the scanning or to the people, something like that. So that's kind of cool. And that's our different targets. We want to be able to perform analysis on, on security tools, web technologies, and people, because those are the three things I, I'm interesting for. So <clears throat> yeah, I mean, in the security tools, I want to be able to perform uh, analysis on the scanners, application scanners, and, and application firewalls. I mean, that's, I mean, they're not that popular so far because they don't work, but they are, they are trying. But anyway, it's quite interesting to, to, to test them and play around with them. It's always nice. So we also want to play around with, with, with browsers and the plugins because there's so much st stuff there in that domain. It's huge because they are so, it's so complex and so much stuff running there. And people are writing a lot of custom proxies, something like that. So it's nice to perform all that kind of testing analysis. So that's our goals here. I mean, I'm sure you can come up with more things you want to play around, but those are the, those are the goals I was looking for. So, <coughs> so now, <coughs> so we have the, the, the conclusion. So, Actually, at this point, the Kamen Web Server is just a basic framework that it gives you the, what, I, what I showed you before. Like, you can, you can, you can create sites inside the server and, deal and rest, get back that site to re request. It gives you the cookies. You can define the methods and so like that. So it gives you a, a, like a basic, basic web server you can use, but you can perform all the customizations you want. So that, and, that, and then you have to put your analysis tool, analysis tool on top of it. And actually now, for example, because it's in Python, so that's, that's ex excellent. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Python lover. So, and now there are a couple of Python uh, fastings, debuggers, something like that, so it's quite nice you can combine all that together. So it's, it's not that difficult. <clears throat> so uh, here our goal is to, to, to be able, yes, we don't want to focus, to waste too much time on the server itself. So it, it, it gives us the flexibility. So we want to create uh, the illusion of, of web apps, apps running inside the server. So we can create simple or complex web application with just a couple of pages or real, or a lot of pages with forms and and everything we want. So that's also interesting to to come up with that. We can see how spiders deal, deal with that. So we can cre create their like vulnerabilities and attacks there and see how spiders go into the site. So that's, that's something we want to also pay. I mean, I didn't put that in my goals, but uh, spiders is also another feature we would like to pay. Well, anyway, scanning tools, they use a spider anyway, so. So, <coughs> yeah, that's, that's a, we can write vulnerabilities, well-known vulnerabilities or something like that, or maybe we can try to put unknown, but it's more funny when you, you put something that people all, maybe all vulnerabilities, that anyone know how to exploit them, and see how, uh, and they're thinking, oh, I'm exploiting this old vulnerability, I'm, I'm cool. So we want to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, our goal here is to see how people and, and tools manage, manage those. 
And so, I mean, yeah, there have been, a, uh, lately there have been a lot of uh, research in work technologies, so that's not new, but security tool analysis, there's not that much research, yeah, I mean, but for example, if you go to there, all this, uh, vulnerability databases, famous databases, you perform uh, search on security tools, vulnerabilities on security tools, actually you will find that many security tools has, has issues there, but there are more things I'm sure we can come up. I mean, uh, I'm sure all the application security tools, it's, it's gonna be a really fun domain and I guess we will see a lot of stuff in, in the coming years. So actually here is, is the model for, for, the, for the tool. We want to test web technologies. Uh, we want to help security experts to perform all the analysis and, and gather information about the attacker, or something like that. And we want to challenge the scanners. I mean, I've been around with all the scanners and something like that. I mean, they are okay for basic stuff, but usually most of the time you have to go, you have to use um, other tools or you have to run your own small tools or you have to use proxy, something like that, because scanners tools cannot go too deep or whatever. So. I mean, they have to improve quite, they need to improve a little bit. And I build a little, I mean, when I, a little bit, I mean a generous, I'm quite generous with there. So actually it's not, it's not there, the tool yet. It will be hopefully next week, that's my personal side. So hopefully next week it will be available there just to play around with it. Um, questions and answers? I had time, yeah, too fast, could. Well, I think I. I was wondering if you found any vulnerability to use security tools, security tools, and you can pay to pay maintenance exploits to use security tools or do the report to work. I have more, I have analysis tool and stuff like that, but I'm not going to release that. Okay. Uh, that's what you get when you work for a small company. You can do whatever you want, so I have to follow. I have to follow that. And actually, yeah, I mean, I like to. Pay. I mean, it's not that difficult to come up with your tool. There's a lot of there's a lot of things you can put here, and it's not that difficult to find to find the stuff. I mean, it, actually, I, the, my idea is just to give the, the basic framework, and from there you are in your own. Actually, I, I, try, I will try to put a nice documentation and tips and stuff like that. So hopefully that will help you. But actually, you are in your own, and so all the analysis tools and stuff like that. You have to make that your, yourself. So I don't know whether it's more, yeah? Can ARM do forwarding and rewriting of requests? Excuse me? Can ARM forward and rewrite requests? Yes, yes, actually, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's a web server. It works like a real web server. It performs all, all the requests and the response back, 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 back to, the, to the tool or browser, whatever, yeah, it performs all that, yeah. It, it actually, it needs to read on a port. So it works like a, yeah. Does it support the most common script languages and stuff you need to simulate the whole environment or don't you have to forward the request to <coughs> with, else? with the script, uh, what do you mean? JavaScript or something like that? Uh, PHP, whatever. No, PHP doesn't, no, actually everything is in Python. The, the trick here is in the documentation I will show you. For example, when you set up the, your plugins or your tool CEIs, actually you can, uh, everything is in Python, yeah. but you, you can put the, ex, uh, the extension. So for example, you can write PG, P, PGP or ASP. It will, be, it will be a Python script behind that, but people think it will be a PHP or ASP, something like that. So that's another people that technique that the, the tool use. And you would have yeah, you, yeah, the tool, yeah. The so you would react like a real script from that language. Yeah, actually in that case, where, for example, if uh, you can, you create a, a Python script, but uh -huh. with, with a PHP, PHP, something like that, when, the, when, the, then when somebody requests that, that page, for example, the server will give you, will give the, that, that, that request to, to your plugin. You will execute that. You will perform whatever you want with that. I mean, you can take that to a file or whatever you want. If you want to get back something, a response back, you told the server, and the server will get back your response to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the request. So you could like uh, fake something? Yeah, like everything that. here is about fake. Okay. This is like, like magic. Everything is fake. This, everything is an illusion. Everything is in your mind. This is the same. <laughs> so you can take uh, like a database, database request and everything? 
right. So it's up to you how, how deep are you going to develop your, your script to be able to do that? Yeah, but it's up to you. I have, I have recreated a couple of old vulnerabilities well known there, and I see how people, yeah, I mean, you can create all that kind of stuff, like SQL, you can sim emulate, yeah, our goal here is to fake everything, and you can sim emulate, simulate uh, SQL injection and stuff like that, and give back the response, oh, they, I get the table, and um, yeah, something like that, you can play around that. File based. It's everything is on files. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, everything is stored in, into into files. It's simple to use. I mean, I don't want complex things, database, everything to have no no. I just want think simply I mean I don't want to waste a lot of time doing that, set up my environment. I just want able to run, write my, my analysis tool, my vulnerability there and see and see the result of that. So it's quite simple. Excuse me? What is the advantage of writing your own thing versus to using and modifying an existing version? Well, one other thing is I prefer to do it in Python. So everything is Python. I can change everything I want running cross platform. That's, that's a couple of things. And the thing is because that with a real web server, <coughs> now you have to configure the, the web server. The, it's more time you are wasting. I don't want to, I don't need most of the features of the web server. No need, so I, I don't see the point of using a real, a real web server. I want something lighter I can use. Uh, so I see, I, I, I use it really as a Uh, I'm not sure. If you, have, if you are running a site with SAP or Java, yeah. it's not going to be possible to run with current or SAP. No, right. No. So, so that's the kind of way to work as a real proxy, something like this kind of I mean, is this, this is the intention here. Like, uh, I mean, you want to do that? Uh, I guess there will be other tools better to do that. So they go here. It's like just to have a web server, something like running. I guess because it's, it's. I mean, for example, maybe with with that. For maybe you, yeah. I mean, for example, it's pretty simple. Uh, I mean, it's, it's for example to be able to do that. I guess what I will do is I will write a plugin, something like that, that will take the response send back to the real server. Get the response and send it back to the user. Actually, with the plugins, that's the reason they are there. So you can do kind of that kind of weird stuff, everything you want. So so there's no no issue there. So yeah, you should be able to, able to do some kind of that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, you want to put ASP or Java for that, for a reason because you know this vulnerability there or something like that. You can also put it there, like fake the, that vulnerability in the in the server itself. It depends. It depends what you want to do, of course. Yeah, I mean, you have your entire, your entire. Yeah, I mean, I, you have your entire site created in a language, move to another language. Yeah, I mean, to another platform. Yeah, that's not. It's not easy. That's that's true. But I guess you can use maybe the plugins and be, and do that something like that. Yeah, that should that should be able. And anyway, it's quite easy. The code actually, the entire the entire server is I think is uh, less than two thousand lines of code. So actually, it's pretty easy to go and change all this, and make all the changes. So, okay, since we're already in the discussion phase, I thank the speaker for this interesting talk.